Cheryl swoops with the, 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 the reckless commentary that she constantly makes. Look, I admitted when huh? she she just doesn't like Caitlin Clark. She doesn't. We 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 it's like if you just don't like her, just say you don't like her. Stop saying you like her. Stop trying to recruit other rookies. Kate Let's Martin. Be she's like, like, Kate Martin. Kate Martin. I just Kate Martin. I was watching the aces because of Kate Martin. I was I was Brett Kate Martin Gary. Remember, I said she was gonna make the team. Rudy said no. She's not gonna make the I, I was wrong. I was wrong. I said she's a basic blue person that I've been in the league for about ten years because she's gonna do everything that you that you need her to do. She's not gonna make any mistakes. She's gonna come in the game. She's gonna do anything coach asks her to do. She won't make it better about her hustling. She's gonna do all the little things. She's gonna step up, she's gonna take a child, she's gonna knock down threes, even though she's shooting at around thirty. Eight, 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 something like that. I don't know what you're saying. I'm sure they're all wide open shots. Yeah, she's open. I mean, of course she's open. She's playing with Angel Wilson. Playing with the beast that's best player in the league. Yeah, yeah, so she's playing with Angel Wilson, but she brought up Kate Martin. Yeah, and all these other players. R Rikaya Jackson out of the, out of the spark. No one's turning on the television to watch Cameron breaking Rikaya Jackson. I'm oh, sorry. I, I, I'm just, sorry. Well, they are too good for women. I'll give you that. No so, one's watching them for basketball, and no and no one's going to their games. So that, that no one's going to their no one's going to their games. I'm talking they're about playing. That. They're playing in an empty building, Nick. No, no, I'm saying, I'm just saying. Though, but that still don't make up stuff. She's I'm making up shit. Course, not you. Of course, of course. So, Cheryl Sims is making up shit because she's trying to diminish and discredit Caitlin Clark. She yeah. said on Gil's Arena, and I'm gonna play the video for a second. So take a look at what she had to say rookie season so far um for me if rookie of the year was picked today i give it to angel okay um threes doubled up they're all doing their own thing i don't know why we keep using yeah. these two to and it's not it's not just those two right like cam brink is doing her thing with the sparks rakia jackson to me who like no one's really talking mm -hmm. about Rakia like, Jackson yeah. is doing her thing whenever she gets playing time, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. I can even go to the Aces, Kate Martin, who says, I went to the draft to cheer on Caitlin and was yeah. hoping to hear my name. Yeah. But, like, what Kate Martin is doing for the Aces, like, people should even be talking about her more. My thing is, like, every time Caitlin gets fouled, mm -hmm. we can't make it seem like <laughs> she was assaulted. But I'm just get, no. fa <laughs> fa fouling in, in, is a part of basketball. Mm -hmm. Like you can look at a whole lot of different games and players and clips and Angel, uh, Asia Wilson when they played Dallas. Asia had a bloody nose, a black eye. She got ill. Like it's basketball. Mm -hmm. And so, and then when you hear Angel talk about it, you hear Caitlin talk about it. Both of them were like. Angel's like, listen, I'm going to always go for the ball. I agree with you. She's not a dirty player. And Caitlin says it was a basketball play. Mm -hmm. But then you go to social media and immediately, oh, my goodness, she's trying to take her out. She should be suspended. And who are you? Mm -hmm. And what did you do? But that's the fan base. That's everyone's fan That's, you know, but, even when, even when, you know, like, even when Angel got hit, there was an uproar. No, it wasn't. No, not, not, not. For Angel. For Angel was. Her fans. Her fans. Oh, yeah, no, her fans was mad as hell, right? Y'all ain't talking And about. then, but everyone wait for her, her response. Ah, nah, I'm a rookie. You know what I mean? So, like, oh, she's cool, she's cool. <clears throat> she's built for trying to bully. She's a bullier, right? No one feels sorry for the bullier. She's not a bully. She's not a bully. Oh, you probably just never seen a post that she's bullying the, 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 the veterans. She's not a bully. Well, I mean, if you want to talk about bullies, we can talk about each, every time Caitlin has the ball, she pushes off. Oh, no, no, no. She, like, I'm she, just she, saying, say, like... But, but she has the, when well, she has that advantage, she has the advantage of, like, an Allen Iverson or a Curry because they're light. They can hit you, do all the little cheap stuff. You hit them, they're going to flop and fall. That's just the benefit of being a guard, right? If Lexi goes in there and gets hit, the little hit going to sound hard. <laughs> <laughs> now that you've seen that, she says that <laughs> she 
she says, first off, she says that I didn't, well, I didn't play. She said that if she had to make a decision on rookie of the year and she had a vote, if she voted today, she would vote for Angel Reese's rookie of the year. Well, give me, um, what would make you vote for someone as rookie of the year? I don't know. Production? Okay. So Angel Reese, yes, is averaging a double double right now. She's averaging pretty much the exact same amount of offensive rebounds as defense rebounds. No, more, more offensive no, no, it's 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 gone it's gone it's, it's gone it's gone down it's gone down. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna be accurate. I'm gonna be fair because last week it was like double offensive boards, the defensive boards. It's the four. Yeah, and and this and and then she had that really good. Uh, you know, she had that game where she went eight for ten. So she couldn't. Get so, so she couldn't. She couldn't grab her own boards. But there was a game before that where she missed nine layups and and grabbed five offensive boards of her own shot. So. If you're going to sit here and look at the actual data, look at it from a perspective of reality, okay? The reality of what happens. That's why when people talk about games, they're not actually watching the games. I watched Caitlin Clark tonight. What happened? Six more turnovers. Six more turnovers. Three of them, her teammate dropped the pass. They hit him in both hands. And what happens? It's a turnover for Caitlin Clark. Yeah. That's a turnover for Clark because they dropped the pass. And she's and a because, She's a risk and she takes risk. She tries right. to thread the needle, and right. they're not used to the needle being thread, and they're like shocked that the ball's in their hands. She just, they drop she, it. She 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 passes like Steve Nash. Remember when Steve Nash was yeah. 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 Like, he controlled him because he understood the game and mm -hmm. read it differently. And they also he could teammates a little later on too. Yeah. You know. But like you, she could she could you know complete these passes. Like on football, she can actually connect on these passes to Purdue teammates, but the, the WNBA players can't catch the pass. But yet they're so. I said Purdue, Iowa. So, uh, so Iowa, yeah, same thing. Um, but yet you're going to sit here and tell me that the that the WNBA players who are so talented, immensely talented, can't catch these passes. Yeah, there's a problem there. So I'm watching that game. So those turnovers that we constantly harp on, she's getting turnovers because her teammates can't catch. Mm -hmm. a, a lot of them. She's responsible for some. She's not responsible for all of them. Now, when I when but but it, but then when you look at Reese's numbers, Reese averages four point six offensive boards to five point six defensive boards. I've I've looked at play sheets. She's catching her own shots. Yes. So her rebound numbers are fluffed the hell up. Yes. And you say, oh, she's at a double double. Let me let me <laughs> give you some more numbers because people don't like data when they like to talk about data. When, when they want to talk about things. They want to mention turnovers for one person, but you know what Caitlin Clark shoots from two-point range? She shoots 48.5% from two-point range. You know what Angel Reese shoots from two-point range? 38%. She's 6'3", plays power forward, and she can't make layups. She's overall shooting 37.1% from the field. Mm. All right, whereas Caitlin Clark's shooting over 38%. Again, Caitlin Clark's shooting jump shots. Yep. Not layups. Efficiency numbers. Scoring efficiency, Caitlin Clark. I don't really know what this number means. I'm being completely transparent, but I know that I read it on ESPN, so I wanted to use it. 1.287 for scoring efficiency. Uh, Clark is 1.287. For Reese, it's 1.121. Now consider the fact that Reese is taking layups again. Uh, shooting efficiency. Reese is 0 0.37. Clark is 0 0.49. Um. So those are efficiency numbers in scoring. Clark also is in the top 20 in rebounding as a guard. She's number four in the league in assists. If the, if the season ended today, she'd be the all-time record holder for most assists in the season by a player at Indiana. She's And she finished in the top five in the league in assists. She leads yep. her team in assists. She yep. leads her team in steals. She leads her team in scoring. Yep. It's fourth in rebounding. She takes... The second most shots on the team, not the first. Kelsey Mitchell takes more shots than she does. They don't run plays for Caitlin Clark. When they do, she's wide open and she hits the shot. But when they guard her, they're guarding her 35 to 40 feet from the rim. Nick, I Ooh. swear to God, they are face guarding her. When she doesn't have the ball, 35 feet from the fucking rim. And they're going to sit here and tell you that they don't guard her differently? <laughs> So you have to run plays for her. You have to run actions for her off of screens. Yeah. And the screens they set in the WNBA are awful. I look at Buster should be having. They have, yeah. Oh, my. You know, I, no, I'm just going to break it down. How wide she is, those, when, she, when Caitlin come off her screens, wide open. this should be wide open. Unless, she gets, unless she's getting hands and hands or doubles. Then oh. 
Man, I look at most of the schools should be doing them. They're not. They're horrible. Size, man. Look how bad she is, man. She's a They're awful girl to get around. I remember I had Boozer. That was a different time, though. When I played basketball, I was young people when I was like that. So no. I didn't get to use them like that. When I played basketball with Boozer in the, in, at the park or whatever. I went to play outside. When I played like fitness, LA fitness. Man, he was a monster to get around. He cleans everything up. I'm telling him to clean it. Now he's 400 pounds. So it's, it's so much harder to get around somebody who's that wide like that. As long as I'm setting up a jewel how I should be and making it so I have to be real wide with the screen, it should be, man, it should be the amazing one-two combination. And it seems like they're starting to find it a little bit later. So I'm not going to be you know, hard one is as bad as no, you No, they're are. doing a little bit. They're doing it a little bit better, which yes. is why Aaliyah Boston has it's now had one, has now had 27, 19, and twenty two in the last three games. They won all three games. If you set those screws up, if you set those screws up, she's, she's, getting, she's getting those passes, bounce passes right to her. She's making the lane. I mean, she did miss a few today that would have mad Caitlin Clark potentially having a triple double. Um, then I watched the game. So I'm, yeah. I'm watching the missed layups. It, they're, they're, they're painful. Like, it, it, it's painful. And they still shot 50% as a team today. Kelsey Mitchell went crazy. She was 8 for 11. Okay. Boston was 8 for 11. But, I mean, typically Mitchell is a 35% shooter from the field. And she's never yeah. seen a shot she doesn't like. So, and it gets, so you watch them, and they don't run enough actions for Clark. But there's just her mere presence on the floor. Yep. Kelsey Mitchell's always open. Boston's always open. The other girl Smith, who, who who you know is always open, they're always open. They're okay. never covered. Her okay. impact is just being on the floor. So, it, 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 is it going to get better? Yeah, they're six and ten now. Right now, they make the playoffs. Yeah. Ask me, ask me, ask us what would happen if if the, if the Indiana Fever failed to make the playoffs. Oh, she's going to get. They failed to, if they failed to make the playoffs, nobody would watch the playoffs. Oh, and, I mean, and, and that's you not know, and then they'll say she wasn't good enough. But the reality is, you know who also isn't going to make the playoffs? The Chicago Sky are not going to make the playoffs. They're mm-hmm. not good. <laughs> They're not good. And you know who's also right now the number seven seed? Vegas. Aces. Yeah. Sorry, Ve- yeah, Vegas, the Aces. They're yeah. the seventh seed right now. While, while, while the Fever have played 16 games and the Aces have played 12. Yeah. And you wonder why this team is, is probably tired. They've played more games still than anyone in the league. Only for today. <laughs> Not tomorrow, be and, 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 well, there'll be one more team that has 16, but by Sunday, they'll have 18. Today's Wednesday, yeah. right? Yeah. Today's Wednesday. They play Friday and Sunday. They'll be at 18. They play the, They play Chicago on Sunday again. Yeah. So another, yeah. another matchup with the, with the with the Chicago Sky. This time, it'll be on the road. But, yeah. you know, it, it, it is – but listening to Angel Reese say these things and saying that she's getting these whistles, like, yeah. what are you talking about? Mm-hmm. And listening to Cheryl Swoops with her, her dribble – I almost think that Gill brings them, brings her on there for a shock value because you can't take her seriously. At t- even Kenyon Martin had to go on there. Even K- Kmart was on there t- saying there were guys, and, and this goes back to she makes a statement that people said they should not play hard against her. No one's ever, no, 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 no one's no, no, ever no. said they should not play hard against uh, Caitlin Clark. No, no one has ever no, said that. Nobody said that. What we have said very clearly is that they play her differently. That yep. they play her. They're 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 hitting her with far more double teams than anyone in the league, and that's statistically proven. They're they're trapping her. They're yeah. doing everything they can to not have her get the ball because they're afraid of her shooting. That yeah. she searches for shots because her coach doesn't right draw draw plays to get her open. There are times where I think Caitlin Clark is passing up on wide open shots that she should take because she's trying so hard to get other people to ball. And she's not selfish. And she is. I you told, know, you should be more selfish at times. Yeah, she should be sure. She can't, she, can't, she can't pass up a wide open 16 footer ever. She, she has to be shooting 17 shots a game, but she, but she's the point guard. She, if she, she was averaging 17, she'd be averaging 25 a game. She's but because a, she's taking 12 and a half, she's averaging 16 point something a game. She's a point guard and she's a real, you know, you know, she don't do the hoorah stuff. So, you know, she ain't gonna come in here like motherfuckers, this motherfucker team. I'm gonna shoot this motherfucker. She ain't gonna do that. She's gonna try to get everybody happy and everybody the ball. When but, she but shouldn't you, be getting much shots up. But Kmart made a point to say, when I was the first round pick and when I got drafted, there were guys that I know 
played me way harder yeah. than they played the game before. Yeah. And I even saw it. I said, man, you didn't play this hard last game. Yeah. So I don't expect people to not play her hard. They're playing her harder than anybody. Yeah. Because they're okay. afraid of getting they're afraid of getting embarrassed by her. Because when you watch these games, I'm watching threes being shot wide open by everybody else. And when Clark takes a three, it's from 28 feet out. She's never toeing the line. No. She's never close to the line. When she comes off of a screen, when the, when the rare times she gets them, the Billy hedges up immediately because there's no if, if they head if they go back. She'll shoot it without they a doubt. They don't play like LSU played them? No, no. They're not going <laughs> to drop on her. Like, they're, she's going to drill that shit right in her goddamn face if they if they back up off her. But she's never taken a 22-foot, 6-inch three-point shot. She's taking them shit from 28 feet out. I watch air balls from 23 feet from these women. Like, air balls. You know, so she's she makes this comment. And then, I mean, Swoops just, just admit, I don't like Caitlin Clark. Yeah, no it, problem with just that. say it. I'm just say it. it. I'm proud it. Says, because it's 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 like when you mention other rookies, no one cares about these other rookies. No. There's two rookies that they care about yes. one primarily. Yes. Caitlin is one, and Angel Reese is a distant second. Because we prove that, not we, but it was proven in Washington when the Mystics played both teams back-to-back -back nights or within two nights of each other. Mm. And Angel Reese, who's from Baltimore, drew 10,000. Yep. And then Aunt Caitlin Clark, who's not from Baltimore, to 20,333, the largest crowd in 20 years in the WNBA. Yep. A lot. I, I mean, that is a proven fact. Yes. But data, data sucks and people don't like it. And then Swoops goes on and at one point Gil, Gil, Gil says, you know, they're, they're, um, you know, one's a bully. You know, Angel Reese is a, plays like a bully, right? Yeah, she does. And she does play like a bully. That's her style. That's her mother. That's, that's, that's how she but, but, Zach Randolph. Zach Randolph. Zach Randolph. Listen to Daryl Swoops how she tries to flip it and says, Angel's not a bully. The real bully is. The real bully is Caitlin Clark because she pisses off on every shot she takes. Did you? Nick, Nick, I swear to God, when, when we get done with this, and I may just do this for shits and giggles to over to play Cheryl Swoops' national championship game in 1990, whatever the fuck year it was, 94, or whatever year it was when she went for when she went for 47 in the national championship. Nick, when I tell you, look at the dribbling first. It's just like this. Mm -hmm. Look at the women and how no defense has played whatsoever on Cheryl Swoops. Like, they're literally backing away. Mm -hmm. She scored 47 points against air. She didn't have five shots contested the entire game. She's getting layups, wide open shots, every shot. Like, it looked like... It looked like Bob Cousy out there. <laughs> it looked like the 1960s men's games that you, people criticize where no one really is on anyone trying to really defend somebody. So Cheryl Swoops was a phenomenal athlete and a phenomenal player, levels better than all these women out there. Yep. And 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 it, and it showed, but there was no double. They didn't double team her. They didn't double her. Are you? I, I'm telling you, you Google it, you look it up. It is it is comedy, because they make that game sound like Kobe going for 81. Yep. They yep. make it sound like Booker going for 70. They they make it sound like Dane going for 70. It, it, no one's guarding these women. She's not being double teamed by anyone. And if you remember the game, she scored more than half their points in that game. But you're sitting here and you're talking about how people play defense. Yeah. They wasn't even playing you in the national championship game. They were Man. backing off of you. You're getting easy buckets the whole damn game. Yep. And you're the best player in the in the country that year. Like, Man. like, give me a damn break. But sitting here calling this one a bully because she pushes off. <laughs> Like, like you can't be like that's when it goes to the point where like you can't be serious, man. That's crazy, and this, is, and this is why. Is that crazy, buddy? Clearly, <laughs> because and this is why fans of Angel Reese or anyone anti Caitlin Clark will jump on that commentary and say, "Well, see, I told you," because Cheryl Swoop said it. 
She must be right. She. I had someone say, Cheryl Swoopstone is more of basketball than you. No, the fuck she doesn't. <laughs> no, she doesn't. No, no. Just because she played women's right. basketball, she knows mm-hmm. more about I coached basketball. I coached Nick. Nick played Division I basketball. I coached another 20 guys that played Division I basketball. I coached guys that are playing professionally. I'm not going to sit here and call myself John Calipari. No. <laughs> but I know basketball, even if I can't jump two inches off the ground. Again, Swoops, like, Reese chose to be the villain. She says, I'm the villain. But then she gets she, mad when she's treated she, like the villain. She, she, she's, so, hold on, hold on. We did this before. I say you can't have your foot half in and half out. Is that even a villain or not? I'm going to accept it. I like villains. I love people who play that role and accept it and embrace it. But when you're like, oh, I'm the villain in the next day, you're crying. I'm like, well, that don't make no sense. The villain doesn't cry. The villain accepts his fate or her fate. They be like, damn it, I lost this battle. I take it like a freaking man or a woman. It is what it is. The, 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 the person who's not the villain got it. But when the villain wins, the villain loves it in your face and, and tell you about it and let you know it. But it's also accepts it when they damn lose. But no, she does not accept it. She always finds a way to get in the front of the media and plays the victim. No, you're the villain. You can't play the victim. You can't be the villain and the victim. <laughs> you can't do both. Pick one, man. I don't have trouble with either one. Listen here. Y'all gonna think that, oh, this is the black guy who's hating against 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 her. I'm not. I'm not. I, I like Reese's game. I'm not her game. I like her. I like Reese playing. I like watching her play sometimes. I like her motor. I like her effort. I told you she's Zach Randolph with short shorts on. With, with long hair, she's the same person. She throws it at the backboard. She gets on rebound. She puts it back up. She's a battler. She's a bruiser. She does it all the time. I love it, but embrace it. Embrace it. Don't come back to the media and, and, and try to pin it on Caitlin Clark when she gets the whistle or this and that, that, that. It's okay. Just take she, it. She also says that when 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 Angel Reese got fouled, I don't know if I went over this or not. I don't think I went. When she got fouled, nobody talked about it. What are you talking about? Like, do you not have eyes? Do you not open your computer? Do you not watch TV? Even Gilbert Arena said, no, that was talked about for a week. Yes. Her fans went, her fans went crazy. Yeah. It was on the it was on TV for multiple days and her fans went nuts. It was all over my Facebook feed for a week. So yes. don't sit here and that's cap. That's BS. And did it was get, talked about for a week. And did, she had a, did she not get as much attention as Caitlin Clark? Yeah, for her? Of course not. Because she's not Caitlin Clark. She can't get Caitlin Clark, yes, and that's okay, and that's okay. But- and one of the and one of the funny things that Gil said was, "It's a she's a guard. You're comparing yeah. a guard to, to a, a power big. forward who plays big. big. Who plays and he, said, he and he said, if, if if Shaq hit Kmart, it would be nothing. Yeah. It would be something, but it would be nothing. If yeah. he hit me, if he hit me, that would hurt. Yeah, I'm gonna fall. I'm gonna be on the ground. Like the guard, like AI gets bumped. You know." I mean, I mean, if Step gets bumped, because he's flying. Mm-hmm. Caitlin Clark's a six foot, one hundred and fifty five pound, one hundred sixty pound guard, and when she gets chucked by a fucking six foot three, six foot four, two hundred, two hundred fifteen pound fucking power forward, she gonna feel it. And when, and, and yeah, the the Kennedy Carter thing with, with this guy with the chuck. Yeah, yeah, did she did she maybe? I don't know if she embellished it or not because I know for a fact that she got chucked. And when you're not looking, it, yeah, you're gonna fall. It, it's it, worse. It, it, it was for me. But I, but I, but I will also watch tonight, where you know people are making these comments about how Caitlin Clark's a complainer. You know what? Welcome to college women's. Welcome to basketball, because <laughs> I've watched multiple games over the past few days, and they all complain. Everybody. Every every call is, is complained about. The men complain about every call. Complaining and basketball are this. It's the same thing. Especially they always complain, especially when you're a star. Yeah, LeBron James flops when he's breathed on. He flops when he's touched. He flops when he's not touched. He he has, there's videos where he grabs his eye and the hit went like wind and didn't touch him. Everybody is everybody, everyone does it. Everybody's trying to get a a, 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 a a notch on the ref or trying to get a foot up in the game and they they, they want to call. They, everybody's yeah. a person for call. You, 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 you want you want the appreciate. <laughs> officials to help you out a little bit and, and give you everything so you get to the people line so you can help your team win or tell somebody else. Like, 
You want everything to go your way on the court. Harden does it. Luca, no, no, it's well, I mean, but Luca doesn't get Luca doesn't get the crucifixion crucifixion coming at him the way because they all do it in the NBA. Everybody so, does so, it. Um, Tim, everybody's in the rest here. Oh my God, they, they complain as a it's, it's par it's par for the course in the sport. They mm-hmm. all complain. So I don't know what the hell she's talking about. Like yeah. she's ridiculous, yeah. and it's just it's just bothering me. It bothers me because it's like you continue, and, and and it's the same rhetoric from Drea Carter. It's the rhetoric from Monica McNutt. It's the rhetoric from fucking uh, Shini Agumake. Like she made a video where she's holding her hands, like, "Oh my god, I wish they talked about the basketball." Really? The fact that they're just talking about that that dreck for a sport, you should be thankful. Really. And then you want to tell the men who are talking about it how they should talk about it? Really? Well, you want to know what? I should tell Kimberly Martin how to talk about football, right? Because she's yeah. never played football. Really? But... Really? We get to be critical of every sport in every league except for women's basketball. Every, like, every, every sport, when it's, when it's on the top and it's popping, we talk about everything that happens in that sport. We're critical of everything. The way you, you did your drop, the way you threw the ball. When you're afraid, that wasn't a perfect ball. The receiver made the play. Uh, that shot, it was a lucky. Uh, uh, what that guy did before the game or after the game that affected him in the game. Like, what he ate the night before. That's probably why he, he did. Like, everybody gets talked about, especially when you're the top. The top spread of her people are paying attention and they care about it. Like, you're going to get people talking about everything. You should embrace it because... Well, it's gonna get, it's gonna bring attention to the sport, and that's what you wanted. Can you, can you? I'm sorry. Can you imagine being mad that Shaq or Charles Barkley. Perkins or Charles Barkley or or um, Michael Porter Jr. who have made Draymond Green? These guys have all made these comments, right? Can you imagine being offended because guys that are making a freaking boatload of money that you dream of making and then they give you a, a constructive criticism of your league and your game and you're offended by it but on the yeah but Patrick Mahomes or Tom Brady is being is being analyzed by Mina Kimes or Kimberly Martin on how they throw a football and how they took a sack and what they shouldn't have done and how they should have done it and this and that and the other by two five foot three women who've never picked up a football and ever been hit by a defensive lineman in their life. At least those men have played the game at the highest level in their sport. These women haven't played even high school football. Hell, they probably ain't played little league football. And they're sitting here criticizing a quarterback like Tom Brady when he played, or Patrick Mahomes, or a running back, or a wide receiver, Josh Allen, or or Lamar Jackson. Like every time I hear, because Kimberly Martin's like one of the experts for the ES for ESPN, and I'm not trying to take a shot at Kimberly Martin, yeah, but I want yeah. I want you to I want people to understand how unfair it is that when when Stephen A. Smith comments about women's basketball, and I'm not a defender of Stephen A. Smith. But when the man comments and Shannon Sharp comments about women's basketball, you're offended because we're not talking about players that have been there. Newsflash, no one gives a shit about those players that have been there. No one cares that Connecticut just lost their first game a week ago. No one gives a shit. No one cares that the Houston Comets won the first four championships. Because if I asked you who won the four championships from 1982 to 1986 in the NBA, would you know? You probably wouldn't. I mean, you guess the Celtics or Lakers probably more. But you know what? In that in that time, Philly won. Philly won. One. Oh, it wasn't just the Celtics and the Lakers. Philly won one. Philly was in there somewhere, right? And and but you're offended because people are commenting about your game and how to improve your game. You're bugged that someone says you should lower the rims. Why? Because we're watching 38% from the field from layups. That's why. From your, some of your better players. Yes. Like, and that's not just Angel Reese. No, it's not just Angel Reese. Really really but, 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 you're just guards. You're just guards. You're 34% from the field. 
Drew Lloyd shoots 34% from the field, and you put her on the Olympic team. Enrique Gumbawale shoots 37%. And by the way, she said she didn't want to be on the Olympic team. She took her yeah. name out. That's why she wasn't on it. So when people yeah. say she was snubbed, she wasn't snubbed. She says, I don't want any part of it. Yeah, she said it's a good thing. Yeah, Kelsey Plum, she was 36% from the field. She's one of your elite guards. Um, Diana Taurasi, she was 37% from the field. One of your elite old people guards. Like, these people are shooting at a level that's commensurate or lower than Caitlin Clark right now. But they're amazing, and she can't take physicality. Yeah. And they're wide open, and she's being double teamed all over the fucking floor. Because I've watched them all play, and I've watched how open their looks are. And the first Caitlin Clark shot that has her towing the three-point line will be never. <laughs> never. It will yeah. never happen. For the yeah. duration of her career, she will never get one of those types of three-point shots. Ever. Because they're guarding her 35 feet from the rim, fronting her. They don't even catch if someone's right behind them. They're not even turning around. Now, they, get, they might get lost now and again, mm -hmm. but they're not... They're not even – the ball could be over there. I'm looking at her. As they if, should. She catches, if she's catching the ball, I'm here. Because if I look that direction and she backdoors me, I'm going to get screamed at. Yeah. You know, or whatever. So – I call that parking lot defense. I told you, parking lot defense. Yeah. I've been calling the parking lot defense. As soon as they go – soon as they go up in that parking lot, I want you better than Katie. I don't care. As soon as she gets up in the bus, you should be going there. Wherever she goes, you go. Don't worry about nothing else. You got to go to Defense, baby. That's what I call it. Yeah. That's what you got there. I don't care about nothing else. Nothing. Nothing. And when they and when they blink and those games where she's feeling it, she hits for 30. Yeah. And they're still guarding her from 28 feet. Like there's these shots that she takes are largely still contested. Yeah. Even from 28 fading, feet. Fading to the left. Fading to the left while she doesn't while she somehow pushes off at the same time, you know? Yeah. But you know, uh, it's it's just it's just it's it's continued disappointment um, because these all these women who claim to want attention for Lee Monica McNutt got a State Farm commercial. Oh my God, Monica is in the State Farm commercial. Monica McNutt got a State Farm commercial the week after that freaking crap with Stephen A. Smith. You think that's a coincidence? No, it happened right after. It happened right after. There's no way in the world that you're giving a sports announcer. A, a freaking State Farm commercial that nobody knows of. That no one knows who she is. They gave it to her. It was literally on TV with a week or a week and a half after that. She went. She did her thing on Stephen A. Smith and became fucking famous over Caitlin Clark. And she was in it with some player. I don't remember what which player it was because who cares? <laughs> because no one knows who these players are. Yeah. Literally, remember when these, these, these State Farm commercials started last year? They were with Caitlin Clark and Jimmy Butler. Yeah. Caitlin Clark and Jimmy Butler. Initially, obviously, Chris Paul back in the day, you know, for men. But women, it was Caitlin Clark. And now she's in the WNBA. And now WNBA players are getting the benefits of Caitlin Clark. And they don't see it. They don't want to stay. They refuse to accept that they didn't call you for you because no one knows who you are. Did you know who Jewel Lloyd was? I remember you said who? If I showed you the commercials with her in it, you wouldn't know they know that's her unless they say her name. Mm -hmm. you, if you if you walk right by her in the street, you're like, who the fuck even, is that? Even the Google K, we went on um Shannon Sharpton podcast, and I was like, who the hell is that? And then she's like, oh, I didn't want to be. I was like, oh, okay, that's her. Okay, cool. Yeah, and, and yet she's sitting here having a. She did a. She did a, an entire thing, a, a, a video, uh, personally, where she had music behind it and. I wish they would talk about it. Just bothers me so much that they don't talk about the basketball, like the basketball. Like, we don't. What, what, what? We don't even do. We don't do that about every sport. So all the sports we talk about other things. We don't just about the sport. It comes with the territory. It comes with the territory. Like we're gonna sit and talk about Bronny James, and, and, and we're not talking about basketball. It's not a basketball. It's not really a basketball topic. It's a nepotism topic. It's yeah. a it's a manipulation of, of of status and position topic. Colin Coward went on some long shit of, uh, today or yesterday that I saw posted where he's where he went on thing, but we'll jump into that in a second. You know, yeah. 
You want them to talk about whatever they can possibly talk about that makes people click, makes people view. I told you last week, I'm going to go out of my way to make videos about some other people just to do it, just to do a test. And it, when I'm proven right about that test, when I don't hashtag or mention Caitlin Clark in that video, let's see who watches it because no one's going to watch it. Heck, Irvin, I call the glorified role player. He's a glorified role player. And you know, nobody watched that shit. Nobody cares. Nobody cares. Thank you for watching Come On Now, the podcast. Please be sure to subscribe, like, comment, and ring that bell so you get up-to-the-minute updates when we publish new content. You can also find us on Facebook and Instagram at Come On Now Podcast and X and TikTok at Come On Now Pod. Thank you again for supporting this channel. Thank <laughs> you.